Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Midinveed Singh. For those of you that don't know me, I'm an emergency medicine specialist here in the UK. Today, we are going to be looking at the seven habits of highly effective people. Remember, like, share and subscribe. Let's get into the video. So the seven topics we're going to go through are number one, take control of your response to the world. Number two, outcome before initiation. Number three, a time management matrix grid. Number four, a winner's Pyramid scenario. Number five, understanding for correct communication. Number six, open discussion for creativity and productivity. Number seven, looking after yourself in the four different domains of mentally, spiritually, physically, and let's not forget socially. Number one, taking control of your responses to the world. Well, that's an interesting one because so many different things can happen around you and you're going to be affected by that. You essentially need to be like a ship in the rough waters of the sea. A ship is going to be moved up and down and it's not going to be an easy ride. Sometimes good things will happen. Sometimes bad things will happen. And you can't control the other things that are happening, which are outside of your control. The only thing that you can do is control your response to the situation. So in that situation, things that you can't control, just let them go. Things that you can control, then you need to learn to figure out what you need to do to correct them or improve them and make them better. So essentially, why worry? You can't control the things that you can't control, so let them go. And the things that you can do something about, well, do something about those. But it's not just simply about that. It's also about your physical, emotional and internal response to the situations that are occurring. If you're going to react negatively to a situation or you're going to react badly, that's going to compromise your stature, then ultimately you will be the one that suffers the consequences. And if you are in essence, the captain of the ship, then the ship will also suffer as well, which could be your business, your organization or your team. So learning to take control of your response means you need to be in a position of knowledge and inner strength to be able to deal with the situation, have enough knowledge to handle the situation and ability to use people around you in those tough times. The number two habit is outcome before initiation. This means before you do any task, make sure that you set the outcome. Make sure you set the correct goal. Once you have the goal, then you should initiate the task because then you can proceed through all the way from the beginning to the end to reach the goal that you set. If you haven't set a goal and you start a task, it's going to take you much longer. You will not be efficient. There will be mistakes which you won't know how to correct or change or evolve to the same degree as if you already had a goal, which would have anticipated failures and steps in between. So let's say you have a very large end goal. That's absolutely fine. But there should be a series of mini goals in each step, which allows you to get to the end goal. This way, actually, it also makes it clearer for not just yourself, but it also makes it clearer for your team so that everybody's working towards the same objective. Number three, the time management matrix. Now, what the hell does that even mean? Well, what that means is you need to put things within a type of a system that's going to be most beneficial for yourself in to manage your time. So that means you need to be able to put things into different categories such as urgency and importance. That way it will allow you to sift through different tasks and be able to prioritize them correctly. And that not only will allow you to work effectively and efficiently, but it also allows everybody else around you to do exactly the same. That way you're not going to be getting bogged down with silly telephone calls, emails or other small little tasks, which actually could wait. Number four, the winner's pyramid scenario. What this means is you essentially want to have a win-win outcome. That is so much better than having an outcome in which you win and somebody else loses quite significantly because that can backfire and it can cause lots of other complications, not only within your team, but with other organizations. So this means that you have to have an ability to negotiate it so that not only do you benefit from the situation or the outcome, but that also the other person or the other team also benefits. And that works so well for us as doctors when we're working with our patients that we do what is called patient centered care. So not only are we giving them medical advice, we are also looking to see what the patient wants to have an outcome as a result of the consultation or as a result of the diagnosis. And this methodology works well across all different types of organizations, whether it's to do with academia, science, finance, design, 
technology, you name it. It's something that is universal. It ends up being with the best result so that both parties walk away because you never know when you might come across each other again. You never know when you might need others assistance again. Point number five is understand others in order to communicate effectively. This means getting to know the people that you're working with, alongside, and your colleagues or other organizations. It means getting to know them not just on a superficial level. It means getting to know them on a much human social interaction level. It's important because once you understand the ideas, the philosophy, and the ideology with these people, or organizations, it means that you are able to then target your communication much more effectively and much more personalized towards that, which will lead to the best outcomes. Everybody says that they listen, everybody says that they can understand what someone else says, and everybody thinks that they're the best talker. That's not true communication. True communication means actually understanding what the other person is saying not just addressing the words that are coming out of their mouth. That means you have to dive a little bit deeper than just being plainly superficial. Number six, open discussion leads to increased productivity and increased creativity. So open discussion is so important. Everybody thinks they do it. All organizations think they do it amazingly, but the genuine answer is, and the genuine outcome is, is that no one does it really effectively. This is about open dialogue, and this is actually about listening to ideas from people within your team that otherwise you might think that it's easy to ignore. They might be able to give you tips or understanding or problem solving abilities that you might not be able to see from your own angle. So by having open dialogue and discussion with them and allowing free flow of ideas will lead to increased creativity and productivity because it will mean that you've got the people who are suffering with the issues or the problems to give their own ideas which can then lead to better ideas. And that's only going to be of benefit for you. Nobody wants upper or mid-level management getting involved in decisions which affect people at a different scope. Simply, if you do not know the processes and the systems going on at that level, how can you make a judgment call or a decision? As an emergency medicine specialist doctor, I would never want to comment on how, for example, the surgical field or the anesthetic department or the gynecology department is being run. If I'm not working there, I'm not going to make commentary about it. And finally, we come on to number seven, which is looking after yourself in the four different domains. What are these four different domains? Their spirituality, they're your mentality, they're your physicality, and they're your social ability. Well, from a physical point, that's everything from exercising, resting, recuperation, and healthy diet. It's as simple as that. There's so many things out there for you to go and read and learn about how to do that. It's so simple, but maintaining that physical side of yourself is key. When I talk about a spiritual aspect, that also incorporates your mental health. This is so important about keeping yourself well-centered, recharging your internal spiritual batteries, understanding your own depth and emotions, and learning how to control everything that's going inside of you in order to be the best version of yourself that you can be, and also connect with who you are from an identity point of view. And this is so important because that can get lost in your workplace, in the rest of the world, and all the many different things that are going on. When I mention from a mental or academic intelligence point of view, which is the third point, this is a key. Learning new skills, doing new things, engaging your brain, pushing yourself further is so important. Letting your brain sit there and rot is only going to be a problem for you. It's going to slow down your ideas. It's going to slow down your ability to problem solve. It's going to slow down your processing ability. It's going to slow down your ability to function in the rest of the world. So maintaining, learning and developing new skills is so important. We come into the fourth bit, which is your social ability. Meeting up with family, meeting up with friends, doing those kind of social activities is so key. It's not always good to be sitting there on your own by yourself with those troubles with those problems it's important to relax and this is relaxing in a different environment with other people now some of you might think that it's okay to be solitary and some of you probably like even being solitary i like being like that as well but i also like engaging and being around other family members and friends meeting up with them because that is the way it has been designed we are designed to be pack animals doing all these things are going to be so important to keeping you healthy and keeping you well these are seven habits of highly effective people. My name is Dr. Midunveed Singh, an emergency medicine specialist, and I hope that you really enjoyed this. So remember to like, share, and subscribe because I want to grow this channel. I really love doing these videos, and I really hope that you love watching them as well. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in my next video.